So yes, uh, this is section 6-2, page 407, 2 through 12, 15 through 24, 26 and 27. So it doesn't appear to be um, that big of a deal. Bless you. Okay, so uh, today we're going to discuss exactly what a parallelogram is. So let's look up. I, I, this is nothing new. All right, this is nothing new. So you guys, uh, it is easy um, to figure this out. All right, if you have a parallelogram, that just simply means that you have a quadrilateral and the opposite sides are what? Equal. Parallel. Well, yes, but that's not what the definition is. Parallel. The definition is if it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. If the opposite sides are parallel, we will then prove the different things um, to show that it is uh, that it is the opposite sides are congruent. All right, or the opposite angles are congruent, or that the consecutive angles are supplementary. But in this case right here, if it is a parallelogram, let's just quickly take a look at uh, question number two. If it is a parallelogram, um, now what exactly does that show? All right, that would show this. That parallelogram means that the opposite sides are parallel. All right, that's what that means. Now, because it is a parallelogram, all right, if you were to extend this out here, and sometimes this is, uh, this is beneficial, um, obviously you don't have to do that, but if you were to extend these out, all right, exactly what we're going to show or to demonstrate here, that if we were to just extend these lines, and I should just go ahead and make it so it's easier. If I would just extend those lines, now you can probably maybe be able to see it a little better. This angle right here and this angle right there are called consecutive interior angles. All right. And the consecutive interior angles are what? Supplementary. All right. And then the same principle over here, we would say that uh, these, because they're consecutive interior angles, are also what? Supplementary. Does everybody agree with that? And then, now here's where I need you to listen. These two angles are also what? Supplementary. All right? So now we use this in, I think, like chapter 2 or chapter 3. We talked about this. If two angles are supplement to the same angle, then those two angles are what? Those two angles are congruent. All right, so it's really easy to prove that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are also what? Congruent. All right? And then once you establish that, all right, once you establish that, all right, <clears throat> it's kind of easy to prove that the uh, opposite sides are congruent. And we can prove the opposite sides are congruent by simply cutting them into what? Yeah, cutting them into uh, two different triangles, all right? And when you cut them into two different triangles, because they're parallel, you could say this is congruent to this, right? And you then could say that this angle is congruent to this angle, all right? And then you have this side congruent to itself, so then you have... Uh, Angle, side, angle, the triangle is congruent by angle, side, angle, and then the corresponding parts are congruent. Does everybody see that? So we just, we just were able to demonstrate everything there is about uh, a parallelogram. Just by drawing uh, two sets of parallel sides, we now have concluded that the opposite sides are congruent, the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are congruent. Um, and so the only other thing that sometimes kids make a mistake on are these two angles congruent right here. No, no. no they don't have to be. Could they be? 
Yeah. Yeah. But they don't have to be. So that's the one mistake that most kids make. All right. Is that the diagonal of a parallelogram does not bisect that angle, even though sometimes it was. It right. looks like it's true. All right. So we cannot say that. All right. So now, hopefully, you realize, and and this is what I always try to tell all of the kids that are taking geometry is that I'm never going to remember all those rules. I'm just not going to do it. All right, I can't do it. But what I can do is easily reproduce all of those rules. And that's what I want you to be able to do. All right, as we move through this chapter, there's going to be more and more and more and more. And there's going to become a point where you just, there's, you just can't remember all of that information. I'm trying to demonstrate to you how it's really simple if you don't remember a rule to reproduce it so you know whether it's true or not true. All right? Let me understand that. All right? So with that little bit of information here, um, what I want to do is go ahead and knock out question number two. So how do I solve 4x? What's the easiest way? Tell me. 2x minus 1 equals 75. Yes. 2x minus 1 equals 75. We could also say 2x minus 1 plus 105 is equal to 180. Is everybody good on that? Yeah. All right. So again, 2x minus 1 equals 75. And because we're brilliant, we would just say x is equal to what? 38. All right. Yeah, because we're brilliant. All right. Gosh. I'm, I'm traveling. All right. Here we go. Um, now, um, x, do, this is a, someone kind of interesting here. x is not a degree, all right? And the reason why x is not a degree is because when we substitute x in here, it's giving us the degree symbol there. So, yes, you're correct, all right? Now, let's look at question number three. Here we just are going to say, obviously, <clears throat> what? Y minus 15. Yes, y minus 4 equals 11, so obviously y is 15. All right, everybody good? All right. Now, oh, I did, I actually, I, I forgot to mention this. All right, so um, if I look at this, and this is something we could prove kind of easily also, they're, they're looking at the diagonals. What appears to be true about the diagonals? Are the di first of all, are the diagonals equal? Definitely not. Now, look right here. Here's how I try to demonstrate this, because that's something sometimes kids make a mistake on. If you draw a parallelogram, if you draw a rectangle, right, and then as you tilt it to make the parallelogram and not a, a rectangle, one diagonal is getting what? And one's getting short. All right, so definitely the diagonals on the parallelogram are not congruent. Can anybody tell me what they think is true now? Where Yep. A, this, a minus 7 and 2 are the same. X yes, the same exactly, minus. exactly. So what I need you to make sure you write down there is, I would like for you to say that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Yes. All right. Say that again. No, no. Um, but I would say, again, I, I don't think that was too hard to figure out, too. So please just look up here on the board. All right. Does everybody agree that this is congruent to this? Yeah. Right? Because it's a parallelogram. All right. Then we can say this is congruent to this. Did everybody say that? Yeah. And then we should be able to say that this angle is congruent to this angle. Does everybody agree? So now we can say those triangles are congruent. Right? By angle, side, angle. Is everybody with me? And so now this must be congruent to that because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Does everybody see how simple that is? Yeah. All right. So again, it's not something I just like look at that and say, well, that's true. It's something we look at and say, look how easy it is to prove that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. All right? And so now... We would say that, uh, like Daniel said, a minus 7 equals 2. So we could write a minus 7 equals 2. So a equals what? 9. 
and then we could say that what? 2b minus 6 equals 10, so b equals what? 8. Come on, I want your mental math to be perfect. Make sure you can do that. All right, nothing difficult here. All right. And here, now what are we going to do? 2b plus 5 is equal to 3b plus 1, so b is obviously equal to 4. Good job, guys. And then we say 4w minus 7 equals 2w plus 3, so w is equal to? All right, very nice. w is 5. All right, now let's take a look at question number 6. Oh, did I ask? I don't remember what I asked that. Excuse me. Yeah, 2 through 12. All right, so here we go. Determine the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals. Okay, so what I want to do is, before I get started on that, I just want everybody to look up here. All right, I'm just going to use 4 as kind of an example. All right, if I listed this as an ordered pair, and this is an ordered pair, and this is an ordered pair, what is the red dot represent? What is the red What does the red dot represent? Yeah, the intersection, exactly. Now, um, there's a word specifically for it. If um, let me just say for now, just so we can see something, let's say that's A. If that point is A, what is true? What's true? Yes, y a equals x a. Perfect. And she said a z is equal to a w. Does everybody agree with that? Right. So, <clears throat> what is a called with respect to x and y? The midpoint. I'm trying to show you how simple it is. All right. And like I said, I, I say this every year, and I know some of you guys get irritated. It's just very simple. It, it, if you don't know, you can figure it out. In my opinion, if you're thinking at all. All right, so we don't have to make it such a big deal. A is the midpoint of what? And A is also the midpoint of WZ. Do you see it intersects at the same point? So in order to find that intersection point, all I have to do is find the what? The midpoint. All right, and the midpoint is the averages of the X's and the Y's. That's how I remember the midpoint. The midpoint formula is to take x1 and x2, add them and divide by 2, and then take y1 plus y2 and divide that by 2. Do I agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So when we look at this right here, if I look at a, b, c, d, and again, I'm just trying to demonstrate how simple it is. If I were to draw this, I need everybody to look up here because a lot of kids, when I say uh, a, B, C, D, here's what they do. They do A, B, C, D. That is incorrect. All right, you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. All right, so we would say A, B, and then this C and this D. Does everybody agree? Now, why is this so simple? Do I really need to find the midpoint twice? No, no because it is the what? It's the same point. If you want to prove that to yourself, you can. All right? But all I need to do is find point A and point C and do the what? Midpoint. And that would be the answer. All right? So here is A and here is C. Add them up. Divide by 2. So what is the X coordinate? What's the X coordinate? I'm thinking 0, right? Right? Am I adding X1 and X2? And then what's the y coordinate? Two, two. Zero, 2. All right, now if I wanted to double check myself, even though we know that's not necessary, I could take b and d. Wow. Still 2? So my answer is what? 0, 2. Just to show you, just to prove you that point. All right? Very easy. All right, no, not necessary to draw it out. All right, you just have to remember. Make sure you draw it properly and find uh, 
find the midpoints. All right. All right. Um, actually, um, we're not doing. We didn't do an indirect proof here, so I don't. I don't like this direction. So let me just see. Um, so A B C D angle A is a right angle. Okay, so um, so how easy if I ask you to, how easy would this be to write uh, just a regular proof for this? What are you thinking? For for uh, let me make sure for number seven. Let's let's do a proof for number seven. Given uh, now that symbol obviously just means that it's a what? It's a parallelogram. All right. So given parallelogram A B C D. If angle A is a right angle, I want you to prove that B, C, and D are also right angles. All right, this to me is just, I think, maybe even two steps. They're maybe all, they're all um, consecutive interior angles with each other, so C is 90 because A is 90, so that is at this 180, and then B is 90 because of A, and C is 90 because of C. Yeah, I like that also. But you could also say, in a parallel, yeah, I was going to even say, um, yeah, opposite angles are congruent also. All right, but there's no way to tie C to D, so he's correct. The best way is to say that A and C are supplementary. Do I agree with that? And A and B are supplementary. So if they're supplements, then they are what? They're congruent, right? If one is 90, both of them, these are 90, and then this over here is 90. Is everybody okay with that? Uh, you don't have to write that out. I'm okay with that. All right. Does so everybody see how simple that is, though, right? Um, a and C are supplementary, and if one is 90, the other one has to be what? 90. All right. Now let's look at the next one. Well, let's just look at number eight and see if that's a little bit different. Um, given A, B, C, H are parallelograms. All right, now this one I kind of like. Let's go ahead and work this one. All right, prove angle A is congruent to angle F. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this out. We can just say statements and reasons. And the first thing is A, B, C, H, and our parallelograms. All right, A, B, C, H. All right. And that's just obviously given. All right. So now if I wanted to try step two. All right. Um, what do we know? Or what can somebody tell me? Very good. Those are vertical angles. Very good. So angle B, C, H is congruent to angle D, C, G. And we'd say that's from the vertical angle theorem. All vertical angles are congruent. So right now I have um, those two things are equal. Now what else? Tell me. Very good. Angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle C is congruent to angle F. And I would just say uh, opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Is everybody okay with that? I shouldn't say angle C here, guys. That's my mistake. 
we should call it what? Yeah, BCH. BCH. Everybody see that? So now, so we're trying to prove A and F, right? So we have it now, right? Angle A is congruent to BCH, and BCH is congruent to F. Well, that's just substitution, or it's perfectly set up as a what? Transitive property also. Right? So angle A is congruent to angle F. Uh, transitive or substitution, I don't care. All right, so let's just go ahead and knock out 9, 10, 11, and 12. Somebody tell me the measure of angle R. Yep, 52 degrees, good. And number 10, what is QR? Three. And what's QP? Five. Okay, now what's angle S? 128 degrees. Yeah, I think that's pretty easy, right? Yeah, I think, honestly, this chapter is very, very easy. All right, if I'm not mistaken now, I didn't care about 13, 14. Yeah, I think all those are easy. Find the coordinates of the diagonal. I showed you how to do that. Write a two-column proof uh, for 23 and 24. I don't think that's bad. And then 26 and 27. All right. Try those. All right, guys. I, 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 think, I think that's not hard. All right, I think it's not hard. And as a matter of fact, I think I showed you how to do like 27. Let me look at 26. Um, actually, here's what I want to do. I want to. I, I want you to change to 27 and 29. All right. Do 27, 29, and then 23 and 24. They're not. They're really not that hard, guys. All right. I think you can do those four proofs kind of easily. The other information is very basic. 15 through 22 are very easy. All right. If you're having any questions or whatsoever, remember where are the solutions? Oh, they the are posted. If you're not real sure, look things up. Can we see your internet? Right. No, I don't have the internet. Oh,